Hello, sweethearts or rivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What's on our table today? Kemet. Dun, dun, dun. Kemet is a huge game. It's published by Metagot. Yep. You can play it with two to five players. They say on the box it will take you about an hour. And... 13 plus. Right. I was trying to remember <laughs> what the third thing I was supposed to say was. There you go. Ages 13 and up. Yep. But stats are on the bottom, which is kind of tricky when mm -hmm. it's full of stuff. Yep. So, Kemet. It's going to be our overview. And up here should be some links to the uh, playthrough as well as the review. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap the cameras around so we can take a look at what's in the box. And uh, then we'll show you how to play. Set it up. Yep. yep. We'll be right back. Okay, let's see what we have here in this humongous box. Ooh. Here's these uh, books of rules. Rule book. Of course, we have a game board. Tile and card reference book. We have our player pieces with our pyramids. All play red. All play green. Yeah. We there is green. also black, blue. yellow, and blue. Yep. But we'll just leave those in there. We don't yep. need them. Nope. And we have our mega monsters. Mega monsters. It's not the correct term. No. That's just what I call them. Yep. And then there's a whole bags and bags and bags of cards and tiles and little punches for chips. And is that it? We also have a I set missing? of player cards in our color. So yellow and red, green. And or player boards in our color. Which I can't remember how you figure it out. But I should be her. Look, it's a nice lady. There you go. Um, how you figure out ladies. is you look at the pieces of your your figurines because each of the player pieces is different. Mine are the spear wielding hawk guys. Well, obviously that's that. There you go, spear wielding hawk guys. And I'm probably I, this one. No, uh, can't see your pieces. Oh, they are spear wielding. I think they're alligator guys. Crocodile people. Yeah, yeah. These blue people, I guess. There you go. But that doesn't matter. I can have this one really. if I want it. If you really want. I'm having this one because it's a girl. <laughs> okay. But I'm playing red because it's the prettier color. There you go. So everyone can say, hey, you mixed up your player pieces to your player board. That's and how I roll. I, they would be correct. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yep. All right. So um, now that you've seen what's in the box, we're going to set it up. We're back. We've got it all set up for a two-player game. There we go. The board is double-sided, which yep. is cool, because on one side it's for two and four players, and on the other side it's for three and five players. Yep. Uh, and for a two-player game, um, this top bank, or if you're looking at the board properly, the east bank, is not used. So this river cuts off the board. We won't be playing with the top section at all. Excellent. So we have all of the blue power tiles here. These are the defensive ones. We have the red offensive power tiles over here. We have the white kind of bolster power tiles here. Um, some of the tiles will give you these uh, special monsters. They're on their tiles. Some of them give you victory points. Some of them give you extra tokens. They're all laid out here. We have our own player board with five action markers. And we have our prayer points, which is kind of our currency set at five. We're going to start off with three pyramids and these three pyramid tokens, but we only get to put these on the board, like actually get them when our pyramids hit level four, which is their maximum. Mm -hmm. And these tokens are round, which is important. Round tokens in this game are temporary points. If at any point you lose whatever gave you that point, you also lose the point as well. So if I get a level four pyramid, I'm going to get this token. And if Charlotte comes over and takes over my pyramid, oh, yeah. she's going to get it. Yep. Yeah, that's not very nice. 
<laughs> we're gonna have uh, 12 troops and we're gonna start with a number of these on the board and what we have to do first in order to get the game fully set up is we need to choose which city we're gonna start with I'll just take this one because it's right here yeah makes sense which means this one will be mine uh, the next thing we do is you're going to take uh, your pyramids and you're going to have a total of three points in your pyramids. That's it? So you could have a one and a two and the third pyramid could be off the board or you can have one, one, one. You can't have one that starts off with three though. Never? Nope. Oh. So the first kind of step or in this game is to think, am I going to go defensive, offensive, a mix of both? We're going to bolster because your pyramids determine which of these cards you can get. So you're going defensive with a little bit of bolstering power. Mm -hmm. um, I am also going to go bolstering, but I'm going to go bolstering at level two, and then maybe I'll go offensive level one. Ha ha! Now out of our 12 units, we're going to take a total of 10, which means there's going to be two of them left behind, mm -hmm. and we get to put them in our city. You can never have more than five troops on the same spot together. I got my five. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's right. And there. Just getting my numbers of troops mixed up. Each player is going to have a deck of cards. These aren't shuffled. Uh, these are going to determine battles, so there's no die rolling. So those aren't shuffled. They're just placed there. Mm -hmm. And I believe we are ready to go. Nope, we're almost ready to go. We get one Divine Intervention card each. Thanks. Now we're ready to go. Okay. And what we do first is we shake this. It's See. not whoever was last, you know, in Egypt or something? I don't think so. No. Okay. <laughs> there. The game is now set up for a two-player game. Does that mean I go first? Yep. That's tricky. Aha! Uh, Kemet is a, an area control war game uh, which uses a lot of very unique, almost Euro style mechanisms in order to move that war, war game, machine. Um, which is a very interesting, unique blend. Um, what you're trying to do in Kemet is you're trying to get to eight victory points at the end of a day phase before anyone else gets eight victory points. What happens if we both get eight victory points at the same time on the same day phase? Well, if that happens and there's a tie, uh, the game still ends, and the tie is broken by how many of those victory points are from battle. So battle is important. Yes, in this game, absolutely. It's definitely a strong war game. Mm -hmm. If there's still a tie, uh, whoever went first in the previous day phase is then the winner. Do they mean the day phase that just ended? Or do you have to remember the previous of that? It must be the one that just ended. Thank goodness, because yeah. you might not remember. Because that would just be silly. Mm. <laughs> um, so, that's how you break ties. If you want a longer game, you can play till 10, um, which also means if you wanted to play even longer, you could go higher. But officially, the game says 8 points or 10. In order to get victory points, how do you do that? Well, there's a few different ways. You can get victory points temporarily if you own one of these temples mm -hmm. and you can also if you upgrade your pyramids to level four yep you get one of these victory points yep and you can tell that they're temporary because they're circles and what they mean by temporary is if charlotte brings her te uh, pyramid to level four and gets one of these temporary victory points and then i move in and take over that spot she's lost control of that pyramid and i get the point or Justin can get his tempo to level 4 and I can go into his spot and get his point. That's correct. Which is the better way. Sure. <laughs> um, the same thing with the temples. If you're controlling a temple spot and then someone comes in and takes it over and moves you out. Then yeah, yeah. I have to give him my point. Yep. So that's why the circular uh, victory points are circles, are temporary because they can shift around. Mm -hmm. However, there's ways of getting permanent victory points, and the ways to do that is if you have two temples um, under your control at the end of a round, you're going to get one permanent victory point. That's awesome. Yep. Um, and there's also permanent ones on here too, the yep. yellow squares. Yep. 
Now, it's interesting because there's a yellow permanent victory point in the white, the red, and the blue. So if I bought this one in the white, I can't buy this one in the red. You can't have duplicate tiles. So it's important. But there remember. is one up there if you get the lion-shaped creature. The sphinx? Right. Yep. There's a point up there, too. Yep. And that's different than the other ones, so you can mm -hmm. still get that one and one of those. Yeah. yeah. So that's a permanent victory point. And then, of course, the big way to get the victory points that are permanent is by being the attacker and winning a battle. If you attack someone and you win, you're going to get a victory point that can't be taken away. And at the end of the game, if there's a tie, whoever has the most attacking or battle victory points breaks that tie. So mm -hmm. this game really pushes people to battle. Yeah. Yeah. Although there are a blue power tiles that allow you to get victory points by winning battles in defense. Tricky. It's exciting. Yeah. So that's how you get the victory points. That's what you're going to want to do for winning. Um, how you play Kemet is with turn order, you're going to start with a night phase. All right. In the night phase, the first thing that's going to happen is uh, you're going to get two prayer points, which means this is just going to go up two. Prayer points are kind of like your currency. It's what you use to spend to buy tiles, improve your pyramids, get more troops on the board. It's, it's like the money of the whole game. So the first thing you're going to do is get two. Um, the next thing that's going to happen is everyone's going to get an extra divine intervention card. Yay. Yay. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to look at any of your tiles that have this the nighttime nighttime face symbol down in this corner and any of those that you have are going to activate and a lot of them are things like extra prayer points more cards um, there's even some crazy ones that let you just die. I'm just gonna build up one of my pyramids another level for free. Yeah, look at that blue one up there you get more people yeah every night you get four people to recruit for mm -hmm. free cha-ching yep. so all your night phase powers are going to activate go through and then you'll be done with those I'll bring that down before I forget I wouldn't have let you start the game at five or there at seven go. good and me not at seven <laughs> and the last thing you do is you determine player order for the rest of the round and the player order is whoever has the fewest number of victory points determines the entire player order so if you have the fewest amount of points, and we're playing like a five player game, mm -hmm. you take all of these. Oh my. And you just get to put them in whatever order you want. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be responsible for that. Just saying. It's it's an interesting catch up mechanism. It is, yeah. But yeah. I would get a little AP-ish from that, I think. It's possible. Yeah. So that would conclude the night phase, and then you move to a day phase. Uh, in a day phase, what you're going to do is everyone's got these five action tokens. And you're going to take one of them, and you're going to place them on one of these action spots. And then you're going to take your action, and that's going to be the next person's turn. And then I'll go around and come back to you, and then you get to activate another action space. A couple tricks to this. At the end of placing out all five of your action discs, you have to have one disc on this bottom level somewhere at least one disc on this middle level somewhere and at least one disc on this top level somewhere. The rest of them can be anywhere you want, but you can't leave any one of these levels blank. And the things that it allow you to do are, uh, the foot allows you to move one of your troops. And by default, they can move one space. Um, this allows you to recruit and it costs you one prayer point for every recruit that you put onto the board. And it has to be in somewhere in where your pyramids are. Um, this allows you to upgrade your pyramids. So to upgrade my level one red pyramid to level two is gonna cost me two prayer points. And the thing is is that you, you don't have to just do one level. If you want, I could spend a whole bunch of prayer points and I could increase this from level one all the way to level four. That's going to cost me four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. That's a lot of points. And you can only ever get up to 11 like in your night phase. Yeah. So it's it would be difficult to do, but one action, you can increase your pyramid as much as you want. Uh, then you have another movement section, which is nice. You get a place here where you just gain two prayer points. Another place to get 
two prayer points. And then these three here, each of these is a by a power tile space. One for the white, the red, and the blue. And the power tiles, there's level one, two, three, and four for each of them. And you can only ever buy a power tile based off the level of your pyramids. So right now at the beginning of the game, I could get a level one red power tile, and I can get a level one or two white power tile. Yeah. I don't have my blue pyramid out, so I can't get any of these. So it's important to increase these to get access to more of these. And also to get your points. And your points as well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, the power tiles are important to remember with the power tiles is, uh, again, you can never have two that are the same. Like I couldn't have both of these. I could just have one because they're the same card or tile. And a level one power tile costs one pair point to buy. All right, so at the end of your actions, uh, to finish up the day phase, what you do is you look out across the board. And if you have two temples under your control, that's when you would get one of those uh, permanent temple points. Mm -hmm. um, you're also going to get uh, prayer points by controlling temples. So this temple gives you three. This one gives you two. This one gives you one, two, three, four, five, but you got to sacrifice one of your guys in order to get any at all. So that would be the end of the day phase. Mm -hmm. And then you roll over to another night phase. Yeah, and you continue on that cycle until someone gets those eight points. At the end of the at day cycle. At the end of a day cycle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the other big thing with the game is the battle. Because, of course, that's what this game is all about. Oh, yes, the yeah. battle. Let's not forget so. the battle. Let's say it's very interesting for moving because the movement is you can go one space, uh, but there are a lot of different things like creatures and cars that allow you to move faster. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that you'll see that there's these obelisks. If I've got uh, troops in a section of my city that I have a pyramid, doesn't matter what level or color, um, and I take the action of movement, um, before I move, I can spend two prayer points and I can teleport them to any space that has an obelisk. And be careful because he just killed two guys. No, they didn't die. They just fell over because it was tricky stepping out of that stargate. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Maybe I'm not allowed to say that. That could be copyright. It's our own channel. Let's just move on. Um, and then they still get to take their one movement. And the board is very uniquely set up so that everything is equally distant. So I could move right here. And that's not all that far away. I'm just now right in front of you. I could actually teleport there and then go one and then bang, I got that temple. Well, oh, you could just teleport right there with that little thing right there. I suppose there is that. Uh, this temple up here you can only teleport to. There's no it, other way to get to it's it. It's an island. Yep. But it's still interesting how everything is equally distant from each other. It would take me one, two, three to get there. One, two, three to get there. Actually, there's only one and two to get there. It just, everything, there's these like long distance areas mm -hmm. and it makes it so that there's not really any kind of long distance buffer, Right. which is a big part of the Kemet's game is to really discourage turtling. Yeah. They want you to get out and attack right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the movement part. Um, the battles. Thank you. Um, if you're going to do a battle, let's say I'm right here for some reason, and then Charlotte comes in and she moves into this space with her movement action. Why would I only have two people? I don't know. It's just my example. Okay. <laughs> I'm not liking where this is going. So right now, her, the troop count is four to two. So my strength is four and your strength is two. Mm -hmm. Then we take a look at these cards. But these cards have more than just strength. There's the swords, which add extra strength. There's drops of blood, which is damage. And there's shields, which are defense. So what you can do is you have to look at these cards, and we all have the same deck of cards, mm -hmm. unless somebody's got a power tile that's changed them. Yeah. And you got to choose one to discard that's no longer in your deck, and then you choose one that you're going to use. And at this point, if you have a Divine Intervention card that helps you in battle or defense or something like that, you can hide it under here and surprise your opponent. Yeah, it's tricky. Hidden, I don't think hidden information. 
Mine wouldn't help anyway, so. Okay. Yours helps. Uh, did you see that? You don't have one left over there anymore. It's under my board. I see. <laughs> or it's under the card. Ha ha! <laughs> so, you've got a power of four to add to your two, so your total power is six. Yes. I've got a power of two to add to my four, which gives me a power of six. Mm -hmm. But I also do two damage, and you do one. And then I defend against one, and I defend against an extra one because of this Divine Intervention card. So. My guys died. I kill two of your guys. I defend so you don't kill any of my guys. And the interesting thing is, killing people and defending against damage doesn't really have anything to do with who won the battle. You can actually like lose the battle because your power is low, but kill all the other people's guys. Or vice versa. So, let me get this straight again. Yep. Because it gets a little confusing for me. The people with the most swords wins the battle. Yes. We had six swords each. I know. So we tied the battle. We had a tie. So no one gets a point for winning. Um, because you're the attacker and there was a tie, the tie goes to the defender. So technically, I won the battle. So you get a permanent fighting victory point. No, because I'm the defender and you don't get victory points. Unless you have that special thing. Exactly. Okay. So neither of us would get any points. Mm -hmm. um, your two guys would be dead. Mm -hmm. My four guys are fine. Mm -hmm. These guys would come off the board and kind of be s sitting here waiting dead. to be summoned again by the gods. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you were the attacker or the defender, the winner or the loser. Any of your troops that are left over, if you want to, you can recall them. So if I decided just to recall these four back, even though I won, um, I would get a prayer point for each one. But then I need to re -recru recruit them. Which would cost you a prayer point for each one. Yeah. But it might be a quicker way of getting them around the board. Yeah, sometimes like maybe you've, you've taken some losses and you really don't want to leave that one or two guy behind. Mm -hmm. You can recall them to get them out of there because yeah. victory points from battle are huge in this game. So you don't want to ha ever have an easy target. Right. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, and then once you run out of your cards here, your fighting cards, yep. you get to pick them all back up again. Yes. So in the instance that Justin showed of me coming in with two people, maybe I just did that because it was my last two cards and I wanted all my cards back for the next battle or something. True. Maybe. I yep. don't know why I would ever attack you with just two Yeah, that would, that would just be silly. So it's just me. Yeah. So that's how battle works. Uh, a lot of it is based off these card pl this card play. So a little bit of hidden information. Me going, look over there! And then taking my Divine mm -hmm. Intervention card and slipping under when you don't see. Right. Yeah. And that is the game of Kemet. <laughs> uh, another <laughs> big part of this game is all of this right here. Yeah. All of these power tiles. Because they all do lots of... Different cool crazy things. Crazy cool things. Yeah. yeah. So, in order for you to get like a real sense of what this game is about, you're going to have to watch a playthrough of us actually playing with these different tiles and getting to know them and right. synergizing them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, cut you off. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, I think we're going to do the playthrough now. Absolutely. And then um, we'll see you in the next video. Yep. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Where are the stats on this one? On the bottom of the box? How inconvenient. Probably. I just like that when they put the stats on the bottom of the box. Just saying. This game stinks on the inside. <laughs> Our review is now done. Game stinks on the inside. <laughs> Literally, it smells funny.